For the great consoles of today, to whom do we give thanks? We're going pre-FPS, pre-Mario, and pre-Pong to talk about Ralph Baer, the man who led the kids of the 70s out of the dark ages and into the now with the Magnavox Odyssey, the world's first video game console. Odyssey, the electronic game of the future. Have you ever been to a party and you had to tell your life story in three minutes or less? No? Try it, it's fun. We're going to try and do it for the grandfather of the $40 billion video game business we know and love today. Let's go. Ralph Bayer was born of Jewish descent on March 8, 1922, in Germany. He had to leave school at 13 because of the Nuremberg Laws, which may have been a blessing in disguise as sometimes not being tied down to an educational institution can help some people think outside the box, as there's no box to think inside. He and his family escaped from Germany to live with relatives in America in 1938, a heartbeat before the start of the Holocaust and, in turn, the Second World War. In the U.S., he studied to be a radio technician, which seems rather evident when you look at the Magnavox's early designs. More on that later. He graduated and worked in the field, but got drafted into the U.S. Army to fight in the war his family, and probably almost everyone else, was avoiding. After the war, he attended the American Television Institute of Technology in Chicago. He got his Bachelor's of Science in Engineering and started working in television. In 1951, he proposed to his employer they should build games into their TVs, and that idea was rejected. He married in 52 and had three kitties by 1960. During this time, he did his extracurricular work in his basement. This is where his life gets really interesting. His most pivotal moment happened when he was waiting for a friend at a bus stop in 1966. He had a vision to build something that could interact with the boob tube based on his rejected proposal 15 years prior. See, this is why you should always carry a notepad with you to write down your ideas when they come to you and not convince yourself they aren't that interesting. He wrote a four-page memo, which would become the Magna Carta of the modern gaming world, hoping but not fully realizing that he was reshaping the future on a global scale. Weary of calling it what it was, a toy, he referred to it as gaming, a military term he was familiar with, to be taken seriously. With the assistance of Bob Tremblay, they created the first test unit, the TV game unit number one, because before being called video games, they were called TV games for a time. All it could really do was put a square dot on the screen that could be controlled. A few prototypes later, the human race got the Magnavox Odyssey in 1972. He also helped develop the Coleco Telstar. After that, in true Santa Claus fashion, Ralph helped develop all kinds of toys for little girls and boys, including Simon. Simon? You know Mommy and Daddy love you very much. He got the National Medal of Technology from G.W. Bush in 06 and passed away in 2014. What a life. In the world of literature, the poet Homer's The Odyssey is one of the oldest stories we know. It's about a soldier coming home from war. This is a story that the first ever gaming consoles as Imagineer must have held dear to his heart, having served overseas as an intelligence officer in the Second World War. Now, imagine returning home, having an idea for a TV that had games inside, developing that idea into a rather primitive but very important machine, the gaming console 21 years later in 72, and then, over 40 years after after its release, being able to play an almost photorealistic simulation of the war you actually fought in on a console built upon your idea. Get your head down and keep moving! Boy, that'd be a trip. 1972's cream-colored box doesn't have games you'd want to play today, unlike many other older consoles. Its small library of games, compared to what we have access to now, are very similar in their gameplay and general feel. To play different games, separate game cards could be inserted, which were the precursors to the modern cartridge. Games were two light squares, which were referred to as paddles you could move around on the screen, and sometimes a third light square would appear, which would often be considered the ball. You'd control the paddles with two controllers, which looked like radio videos, evidence of Mr. Bayer's life experience. So that the different games would make sense, you had to physically put overlays on the TV screen. Kind of neat, but to be honest, might as well play a good board game instead. I quit playing board games five years ago. YouTubers Odyssey Now have showcased how to play a bunch of Odyssey games, a glimpse into how the gamers of yesteryear spent their free time. The games had no sound, so no one ever yelled at you to turn that darn video game down, you bum! And the games didn't keep score. You had to do that yourself. So I get two points 
that puts me up to two here. Your mental math skills got pretty good after playing more Odyssey. I would imagine video games in the 70s could make a good substitute for your math homework. And because it didn't keep score, there were no high scores to beat and no trophies or achievements to obtain. Those are the hooks that have made so many contemporary arcade and console games so addictive because they suck you into their feedback loop. Oops, did I say that out loud? Oh, okay, let's keep going. The original video game machine left a lot more to the imagination. Let's look at Shooting Gallery. You can always take to rifle practice. This little game doesn't look like much, but without Shooting Gallery, there's no Duck Hunt, no Wolfenstein 3D, no COD, no Doom, no Quake, no Cyberpunk, no nothing. There's one reason to thank Ralph Baer and the gang at Magnavox. Here's another. Look at this primitive tennis game. For some of you, this was the year your parents were born, by the way. Without this tennis, there's no Pong or any subsequent killer tennis games we know and love today. I mean, we could keep going with basketball games and baseball games and football games, but you get the idea. Heck, maybe without University of the Solar System, we wouldn't have the sophisticated No Man's Sky. If you go back in time and destroy the Odyssey, video games may not even exist. We just have, well, videos. Thanks again, Mr. Bear. The gang at Atari built upon the concept of the Magnavox Odyssey as well as many other innovative consoles of the time like ColecoVision and the Channel F to create the Atari 2600, which had more immersive games that play on cartridges instead of cards and used a more intuitive joystick. The Atari is directly associated with a feeling of 1970s good times. So many good times, in fact, that the Atari is coming out with a new console, the Atari VCS. What about Magnavox? Will it be releasing a new console? Magnavox made a whole lot of successors to the Odyssey. Let's list them for fun. There was the Magnavox Odyssey 2, the 100, the 200, the 300, the 400, the 500, the 4305, the 2000, the 3000, the 4000, and the 5000 prototype. Magnavox was purchased by Philips in 1974 and created the Philips Odyssey 200, the 2001, and the 2100. Magnavox still makes consumer electronics today and has no plans to make a new console in the near future. It just doesn't have enough of a name to ride on and didn't create enough good memories for the kids of the 70s, I guess. Being a trailblazer isn't always a path to endless glory. If you look into the Encyclopedia Britannica, you'll find that Nolan Bushnell is the inventor of video games. So love you. Sometimes, the glory goes on to the coattail riders who slingshot ahead thanks to the bump draft created by the trailblazers. Still, there is honor in being first. In ranking systems, there's always a new best. Read any magazine. There are new greatest of all times in so many categories every year. But there can only be one first for all times. That's a position that the Magnavox Odyssey can hold on to forever. After the Magnavox Odyssey, there was the Channel F, the first console with interchangeable cartridges. Thanks to this machine, we can now play a wide selection of amazing games on things like the Switch. Thanks, Zeus! 